Hello, my name is Maarten Hove, I'm a PhD student at the Eindhoven University of Technology and today I will be talking about a work on the role of everyday sounds in advanced dementia care. This is joint work by Rens Prankert, Saskia Bakker, Gail Kenning, Inge Bongers and Barry Eige. Dementia is a general term to describe diseases and conditions characterized by cognitive decline, such as memory loss or difficulties with problem solving. The most common cause of dementia is Alzheimer's disease, and currently there is still no cure for Alzheimer's, and it is not expected in the near future. So therefore, alternative or non-pharmacological support strategies are needed to improve quality of life of people with dementia. A common example of such non-medical support is music therapy, where people with dementia listen to music or play various instruments. Research has demonstrated how music has a beneficial effect on people with dementia, as it stimulates reminiscence, physical movement and social interactions. In addition, researchers in the field of HEI have been exploring the role of technology and design in adding value to the lived experiences of people with dementia. And this is why we see research bringing together music, technology and dementia, for instance by exploring how technology can support music sessions. But music is only a small part of the broad spectrum of sounds we perceive in our everyday surroundings. These sounds from everyday life provide information about our environment and can influence our emotions and behavior. Our previous research has shown how sounds selected from everyday life and represented for people with dementia can provide meaningful engagement and pleasurable activities by evoking memories and emotions linked to past experiences. Furthermore, everyday sounds can offer cues for enjoyable social interactions between people with dementia and their care network, such as professional caregivers or their relatives. But researchers have yet to explore the integration of sound-based interventions in dementia care homes. This raises questions about how the beneficial effects of everyday sounds can be leveraged in care practice. For example, can exposing people with dementia to everyday sounds in daily care routines be beneficial against the backdrop of existing ambient noise? More insight is needed into whether sound can add value to the everyday lives of people in advanced stages of dementia living in care homes, and if so, how sound interventions can be implemented in such environments. This paper presents the findings of a field study in which we deployed a sound-based intervention named VITA, a pillow-like sound player in a day-to-day -day care context. More specifically, we explored the responses of people with advanced dementia to everyday sounds facilitated by VITA in a care home, and the relevance of these responses in the care environment and care practice. VITA is an interactive pillow that can place sounds by touching one of six textile touchpads, and by using VITA, we aim to capture the perspective of the residents in the care home and offer a sense of agency while listening to everyday sounds. The current iteration of VITA is a professionalized and standalone product developed by the Pleiade Innovation Team in collaboration with the Eindhoven University of Technology. The following video clip is a commercial promotion video of the VITA sound pillow to illustrate how people with dementia can use VITA to play sound. Aan een hele hoop dingen. Ik heb vriendinnen die duwen alles. Dan zei ze: Ga je mee? Zeg nee, dat mag ik niet. VITA contains both general and personal sound sets to enable exploration and variation of audio content during the study. The two personal sounds were accessible on the two right pads, with a specific sound set for every participant. 
General sounds were accessible on the four left touchpads. These sets were based on a soundscape appraisal model for rating sound in terms of pleasantness and arousal. We translated the four main components on the pleasant spectrum into the following sets. Play, day out, listening and daydreaming. For instance, sound set play consisted of short playful sounds, while sound set daydreaming consisted of white noise relaxing ambient soundscapes. The sound sets could be selected by a manual interface or a smartphone app. The reverse side of Vita contains a minimal interface with buttons to select sound sets, adjust the volume or set the device into sleep mode. The mobile app has the same functionality as a button interface but can also be used to upload and manage personal audio content. This offered flexibility for the caregivers who are not used to working with a smartphone. There were three main study phases. First, we conducted introductory workshops with the professional caregivers who were designated to oversee the deployment of VITA. Next, we deployed VITA for four weeks in two care facilities and conducted in-situ observations. Finally, we conducted exit interviews with the professional caregivers after the deployment of VITA. This study took place at two care facilities in the Netherlands and in total 19 people with advanced Alzheimer's participated. 18 caregivers and activity supervisors participated to use VITA with the residents and take part in the workshops and exit interviews. This research was approved by the Ethics Review Board of Tilburg School of Social and Behavioral Sciences. It was also approved by the GDPR officer and the Data Management Officer of Tilburg University. It was evaluated and debriefed at the Client Representation Board of the Care Organization, which is a representation of the relatives of the residents in the care home. Proxy consent was obtained from the legally authorized representative, such as a spouse, family member or caregiver. The thematic analysis of the field notes and exit interviews revealed how everyday sounds facilitated by VITA were able to cue meaningful conversations. Initiating and facilitating conversation is key to nurturing relationships between caregivers and residents in a care home setting. As illustrated by this quote from the exit interviews, sound could serve as a cue for asking questions and to get a conversation going. For instance, one of the residents was bedridden and could not leave his room, and as a result he received a lot of individual care in his own room. But he was also an absolute car enthusiast, so during sessions with Vita he would listen and explore sounds of race cars and engines of cars he used to own. This cued him to talk about how he once raced on the Zandvoort circuit in the Netherlands, as depicted in this field note. This example illustrates how everyday sounds served as cues to talk about personal and emotional topics related to the resident's past. The everyday sounds were able to stimulate playfulness and curiosity in the care space. Using Vita resulted in acts of exploration which afforded opportunities for discovery in an environment where meaningful experiences are often considered scarce. These interactions facilitated by VITA were able to create a general sense of inclusiveness and social belonging among the residents. As illustrated by this quote from the exit interviews on how the use of VITA resulted in a general interest in a communal space. VITA also enabled acts of playfulness for the residents. During interactions with Vita, the everyday sounds facilitated an enjoyable and informal atmosphere with room for teasing, pretending and acting playfully. This had an impact on the general atmosphere in the communal living area, as illustrated by this field note which displays a situation where a playful bubble sound led to a joke between the caregiver and the resident, resulting in an informal and pleasant atmosphere in the residential care environment. People in very advanced stages of dementia are often not able to speak anymore and are often immersed in their own reality, which makes it difficult to communicate with them. Therefore, caregivers cannot always communicate well with residents or understand what they mean as illustrated by this quote from the exit interviews. During the study, the caregivers tried to connect with the residents through sound by using Vita together. Our field notes revealed how people with advanced dementia express their reactions to sound through bodily responses, such as smiling, laughing, closing or opening eyes, mumbling or imitating sounds. By engaging with and responding to these nonverbal responses, 
caregivers were able to establish a mutual non-verbal communication and connect with the residents. As expected in this field note, touch and proximity was also important in this non-verbal communication. For instance, how exploring sounds on Vita together by holding each other's hand became a way of interacting non-verbally. Vita was used during individual sessions that were scheduled in the daily care program to evoke reminiscence or establish personal contact. But the nursing staff also used Vita in between activities during everyday care. For instance, during moments of boredom when no activities were organized and residents became agitated, as illustrated by this quote from the exit interviews. At times, there were too much sources of distraction in the care space, which made it difficult to use Vita, as the additional sounds would be too much and overwhelm the residents. For instance, caregivers tried using Vita during moments of unrest to calm residents, but this was in most cases unsuccessful. This field note depicts a situation where a resident was agitated, refused to sit down and showed absolutely no interest in using VITA. So our findings offered insight in the potential added value of everyday sounds in care practice. Sound can serve as a universal and open-ended cue for meaningful responses. It is an intrinsic property of sound that people have different interpretations, which is a benefit in the context of dementia, to not confront people with their disabilities. Also, everyday sounds were able to stimulate social interactions, which is important in the context of dementia. In care institutions, social relations are key to provide a person-centered approach in care and to maintain and support personal identity and selfhood of the residents. And lastly, people in advanced stages of dementia are often not capable to communicate verbally. Everyday sounds can serve as, as a means to connect non-verbally to support the struggles of caregivers and relatives in making contact. Based on our findings, we outlined several implications for design. The first implication is how sound can be used by the care staff as a tool for providing meaningful experiences as an alternative approach to remediate behavioral disorders. Sound is not a universal solution to reduce agitated behavior or address symptoms as a result of dementia, but sound can support enjoyable and social activities during day-to-day -day care moments that adds to the quality of life of people with dementia. A second implication is that the nature of the everyday sounds are situated and depend on a specific context. Personal memories of the past can be interesting for individual activities, but residents should not be limited to just that contact, as they also should be offered new possibilities for exploration and discovery. And as a final implication, we suggest how designers should embrace ambiguity in the design of sound-based interventions, by not assuming that people with dementia will recognize certain sounds, but rather by exploring what meaningful reactions sounds can elicit, which is more relevant than a correct association in the reality of dementia. So, to conclude, we present insights from a field study that explored the relevance of everyday sounds in care homes for people with dementia through representing sounds using VITA. The findings contribute to existing literature by reporting how everyday sounds in dementia care can stimulate social connections by eliciting meaningful conversations as well as non-verbal responses. Also, we have outlined design implications for sound-based technologies to use with people in advanced stages of dementia in real-life care settings. With these implications, we hope to broaden the discussion on the use of sound to manage behaviors from a medical point of view to offering alternative perspectives that address social connection as well as individual and group experiences related to sound. However, more research is needed to build on these explorative findings and to further investigate the potential importance of everyday sounds in dementia care practice. The study was part of the Everyday Sounds of Dementia project funded by Zonem Wee in the Create Help program. We want to thank the participants, the care staff and care organizations Archipel and Pleiade for their involvement in this study. Thank you very much and we are very happy to answer any questions via email.